it. Hello, everybody. So today we actually have my teacher, my professor, I'm going to say also my healer, like the one that helped me process timeline therapy, hypnotherapy, um, NLP, like all these acronyms that were like, what the heck is it? Why is it important for me to be listening? And let me tell you, if you are that person, if you are ready to take your um, practice into a space where there aren't that many people doing timeline therapy, especially in my area, North Carolina, um, there aren't that many people that understand what it is. So today we have a beautiful soul, Carol, who is from down under. And clearly we are totally opposite because I think it's about 80 degrees today here. So 80 degrees is, uh, is warm, very warm. So it's double where you are at. And uh, I want to know, tell me, Carol, first of all, who the heck are you? Oh, gosh. And I mean, we, we've spoken about this before. My name is Carol. Um, I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'm a business owner. Um, but most of, the, most of all, you know, I'm a healer. I'm a coach. I'm a trainer. And I absolutely love everything that I do in the world of NLP, timeline therapy, and hypnosis, because you know, I love to help people. I love to help people heal. And what I love the most is seeing those not just physio like physiological changes, but the mindset changes as well. I mean, when people do these modalities, especially timeline, you look different. And I mean, you're proof of that, Jamile, because, you know, we remember when we took you through NLP Prac, remember we had a photo at the beginning and yeah. then we took a photo at the end. And, you know, because you do get your own healing, everybody, it's like the weight of the world just lifts mm -hmm. completely off your shoulders and everything that's been weighing you down, it just dissipates. Absolutely. And it's funny, like people who are on here right now, Francis, uh, my hundred moms project that I'm in, it's a worldwide hundred moms project. And even they can tell a difference. Even they feel a difference every time that I go online, because this is something that we don't just, first of all, go and get healed from, right? We don't just go train on it, but we live it. Like it is part of our every single moment. Because when you know and are able to tap into the unconscious mind, the question that comes up is what else is possible? Yeah. Like yeah. we're creating miracles here. Can we do this here? Can we do this here? Or if I'm down and out, I'm tapping in and talking to somebody like you and saying, help me. Absolutely. I'm so. And I think I took it twice, two or three times. Like I've been back because uh, tell us about that. Tell us about like when you go into the training, you actually get the opportunity to go back and do the training. Yeah, again. Absolutely. I mean, we fully, we really believe that, you know, we, we want our students to get the best. So it's not like you go in and you do the course. And then if you want to resit it, you've got to pay again or pay half price because you know, um, I know a lot of people do that, but we allow our students to come back as many times as they want within two years of their training. So you yeah. can come back. So, I mean, we, we've offered, because of the online space, we're now going back into the training room. So if we've had students that have come online, they can yeah. come and do it face-to-face. -face. Yes. You know? So th there are many opportunities, but when you complete the master practitioner, you can come back as an assistant and you get to see the, um, the training room from a very different perspective. Yes. So you, you, it, it's like you're not in it as a student, you're mm -hmm. sitting back and you're actually watching the students going through. So that is, that is open to anyone who goes through and does 
master practitioner. So obviously you've got to do NLP prac for mm. the prerequisite to do master practitioner. But it's also an opportunity just to, I guess, share your own knowledge and get to do the course all over again just from a different perspective. And that was very, that was very, very good for me when I first started. It really is. It really is because you have, uh, you're just in a different space because you go through in like as the healed healer, right? And you have your time to process, then you take the course and you're able to go back in and, and see the difference in other people as well. So I love it. But yes. let's let's break it down. NLP, TLT, hypnotherapy, like first of all, what the heck is all this? Can you break down each of those acronyms? So NLP. Um, neurolinguistic programming. So the neuro is all about our brain and our mind. Hello, little man. <laughs> and the way we think, our thoughts, you know, and it's not just like it's it's not just our conscious it's our unconscious as well Talk to me about that like what is the difference between the conscious and the unconscious since we're talking about the if neuro the conscious, the conscious part of us is the thinking the thinking part the part of us where you know the cogs are turning and you know usually when I'm with a client and we're we're doing timeline we work, we work with the unconscious mind, you know, and I explain this to them, but I know when they're in their conscious mind and they're thinking too hard, I tell, and I can, I can see it. Mm. I can really see it. So that the conscious mind is the part of us that is thinking. It is the conscious mind is the doing. Yes. The unconscious is the part of us. I mean, I like to describe our unconscious mind as the part of us that knows who we really are, mm -hmm. it's the part of us that knows our truth, it, it, but, it, it, but it also has a job to do. So it has a job to protect us. So yeah. it protects us in regard to, you know, pushing down memories. Like if, if you've been through a, a traumatic event, sometimes the unconscious mind will push it way down into the ethos. Yes. And it doesn't allow that to come up until you are ready to be healed. I mean, I have so many clients that come to me and they say, I can't remember anything prior to the age of five. Mm. And I find that really interesting because normally if someone cannot remember, there has been some sort of a trauma. Mm. And I was only having this, this conversation with a client just a few weeks ago and she said, you know, I keep having this memory, but I don't know if it's a memory and I don't know if it's a dream. Mm -hmm. And so we're working, we're working through that and we're processing. So that's the neuro. The neuro is all about what's going on up here. Um, but it is also, okay, so that's the neuro. Then we've got um, the, the L, which is the language. Now, the language is not just the words that we speak consciously, but it's also the words we speak to ourselves in our mind, in our head, unconsciously yes. as well. And it is also the words that we speak to others. So when we do NLP practitioner, we spend a good three days, as you remember, on language. Yes. And the, the way we speak, how we speak, we look at the tonality of what we speak. We look at, you know, the words that come out, but what specifically do those words mean? Right. And so, I wanna, I'm going to stop you there for a second. Yesterday, last night, I had a, a client and literally, like, I'm in the same book here. I have one page of notes that she's talking to me and I'm writing it down. Because what she's saying, even though she's just kind of ranting, I'm trying to figure out where she's at. What, what are the beliefs behind the words? So she could say, I'm so dumb or I'm so, or she, she might not even say that. She wasn't even saying I'm dumb. She was saying something like that the interpretation, I was like, it's unworthiness. She feels unworthy 
to have such a high accolade because this is a an incredible human being. And um, I was able to pick that up from her from her language, her energy, her feelings, her emotions, her, um, and, and you're right, three days, I remember looking at our eyes and wherever we were shifting. I mean, it's almost like micro expressions, almost like being able to pick up because whenever I do online, I ask him, I need to see your face the whole time. I need to be able to read like what's going on so that I can help you if, if you feel stuck. So yeah, I love that. Um, so neuro, the brain, that conscious and unconscious, the language, and then back to the conscious and the unconscious, is conscious more or less than unconscious? It's less. Okay. Tell us about the conscious. The unconscious is expansive. Mm, the unconscious yeah. is. Yes. Yeah. The unconscious is every, is everything. You know, and this is why I love training with you, because although this is very science, very Joe Dispenza, very science, we were able to also get the woo-woo side of it. We were also able I to- love unpacking the, I love unpacking it that way. Yes. It, it makes it easy to understand. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the thing is, as a healer, we, we've we've all got that woo woo inside us, and I and I love to bring it. I love to bring bring that in so that that people can understand it. And and sometimes I will literally, and I'm not sure if I did it in your group, but I know I have done in the past. I've gotten up out of my chair and I said, right now I'm stepping out of NLP, and I stood to the side yeah. and I started talking about law of attraction, and yeah. you know. And I mean, and that's a big part of my life as well, because that was my very first modality, you know, a certified coach of law, law of attraction coach. So, that was so the I love this, guys, this is what's so fun. So the adventure of life that I keep on talking about is this, that it is science, it is the supernatural, it is the law of attraction, the law of assumption, it is all of it. And then if we decide, screw it, it is none of it. It is, it is what we decided to be. And so being able to be in your classroom, and it's funny, you and your partner, you and your husband are like that yin and yang, right? He's got this he's map. He's on a 10K run at the moment. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of. And so like this yin and yang, and we get to see all that melding. So so with, when it comes to the conscious, we know it's like 5% and we think this is it. This is the worst thing that's happened. It's all that it could be, but it's really like not even 5% of really what's happening. 95% is the fullness of it. And when you can master your own language and neuro and unconscious mind and emotions, that's when we can be able to do the last letter, right? Which is yeah. that. The P for the programming. And, mm -hmm. you know, the programming is our experiences, the way we've been brought up, the things that have happened to us, the programming that has been, I guess, put onto us by other people who mm -hmm. we have grown up with. You know, we take on you know, sometimes we take on other people's thoughts, other people's words. And this is where the power of NLP can help change all of that because, you know, we have a lot of people that come to us with trauma from their past. Yes. And, you know, and it's like that that programming. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I will hear... Um, you know, I will hear someone speak and I'm thinking of someone in particular at the moment. I hear their words, the words that come out of their mouth. And I know specifically that those words are not their own. So, you know, we, we take on as human beings, we take on the thoughts and feelings of other people. When we are a small child, okay, we don't have the capacity 
to question anything. So between the ages of naught and seven years old, we are like little sponges. We're like these little sponges that run around and they completely absorb the words and the thoughts and the actions of other people. And you don't question anything prior to the age of seven. So it's this is this is just part of um, you know when we're, we're the part of the programming. I was just saying to Neil that when we're when we're between the age of naught and seven, we're like these little sponges that run around and we absorb everything from everyone. So words, thoughts, feelings, beliefs, it's the conditioning. And yeah. we can't at that age, we cannot question. So we can't say at that age, no, that's not right. Yes. So this is where, you know, in timeline, the very first time that you feel an emotion in this lifetime after birth, is usually between the age of naught and seven. So two, two things real quick. So I put you specifically on the screen because I wanted everybody to hear that. Um, yes. And because he had, a, he, he needed me, right? And yeah. you say not, not, uh, what is that? Because you're Australian, so I need to learn. Well, what was Sorry? You said between naught and seven. Naught. What? Okay, naught, a zero, naught, zero and seven. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Okay, if you guys knew that naught means zero, okay, then you're right. good. Um, but it's true. So like right now, he needed my attention. I had to go run and change his diaper. And I could have left him like that. He would have been fine because he's a boy and he doesn't care. But for me, I want him to know if he's coming to me, he's needing me, I want to show him, I want to program him. He can come ask for me right? Which is why I love working with healers who are mothers because they understand this. So when you just said about working with people and they, you know, have a memory of a situation, let, let's talk about unworthiness, right? And they go back to four years old is what the unconscious mind said. And they remember everything in that moment that was quote bad and I'm saying quote bad because of the next part I'm going to ask you how do you um help them process so that they could see the learnings oh okay so okay so what we've got to backtrack a little bit so in a timeline do you want me to talk specifically about after birth or do you want me to just talk about where the memories where they can actually come from in timeline. I think particularly this, like a, a one uh, instance, like maybe they remember at one years old, I remember yeah. I was in the kitchen. Okay. okay, so here's the thing, okay? that That's a key word, right? Remember, we're not remembering because when we're remembering, we're, we're in our conscious mind. Okay, so this is where, this is with timeline, it is purely unconscious thought okay so it's unconscious messages that come from the they're, they're messages that come from the unconscious mind so the way I help my clients in timeline is I say when we are in the timeline this is about trusting your unconscious mind it is the first thought the word the wherever your unconscious mind takes you trust it because that that is your truth so I'll use myself as an example just so that you can really get the picture so when I was doing my own training and we were doing anger the timeline because in timeline we release the five negative emotions anger sadness fear hurt and guilt and I remember saying to my buddy I don't, I'm not angry, I, you know, I, I don't hold anger, I'm just not an angry person. And they said, come on, just like, shut up, Carol, do the exercise. And I mean, all right, okay. So it was like, right, trust your unconscious mind that you're, you know, it's going to take you 
where mm -hmm. you need to go. Now, what we're doing is we're going, we're asking our unconscious mind to take us back to the very first time yes. we felt the emotion of anger. Now, consciously, we don't know. We really don't know. Between the ages of naught and seven, how can you go back and know, right, that was the very first time I felt anger? We really don't know. So <clears throat> I did, I, okay, did the exercise, I, you know, and the first thing that came to my mind, the first number was the age of two. So I said two. And then? We go through the process of allowing your unconscious mind to take you all the way back to an event of being two. And we look down on the event. And it was really interesting for me because what I saw was a little two-year-old me in a room, locked in a room, trying to get a door handle. I couldn't reach the door handle. I was banging on the door screaming my lungs out and the more I screamed the redder this little face got and it was quite horrendous you know and I could feel that because in timeline it's also important to feel the emotion like feel what you need to feel yes. and that's what helps us let it go now yes. the thing is you know, that was that was interesting, like looking down, seeing, you know, in my unconscious mind, you know, because and some people and this is really interesting too, Jamila, some people don't get a visual, but they can get a feeling as well. Yeah. And it's also about it's also about um, active imagination. Yes. It's also about active imagination. So if you if you can't get a visual, you can get a feeling. It's like, well, what could possibly what could that possibly be? Yes. So you can feel into it. But getting back to my two year old self, when <clears throat> I came back, I was I was in shock. Firstly, because I knew that that was true, because mm -hmm. my mother had told me that. When I, you know, as a little girl, she um, dropped me to my auntie's house, to my auntie, because mum had to go shopping. And when mum picked me up, I had a red face and I had a big smack mark on my leg. Mm. And what had happened was she was, she didn't really want to look after me that day and she locked me in the bedroom. Mm. And it was, that was a true thing. And my mum had told me how distressed she was and how distressing it was for me and how I never wanted to go back there so yeah. my unconscious mind knew I consciously knew about it but it was not a memory that I thought about mm. I absolutely yeah. did not remember that exact event but my unconscious mind said that was the first time you felt anger Yes. Yeah. Let me tell you what, um, and, and I've seen it because the blessing was that I've been through your training and I was able to do it, but I've been two other times that I was able to redo it. And what is amazing is that in one of those processes, fear, and I had never seen this before. I actually saw it through my eyes as a little girl. And I was, I saw cement maybe like a floor or two floors down. And I was looking down and I remember getting grabbed back up. And the fear that I felt wasn't my own fear. It was my mother's fear feeling, oh my God, the little boy almost pushed her out the window. And the little boy was just trying to show me out the window. Maybe you're telling so, me. Yeah, say that because when I was sent, uh, taken through the process, Yes, there was fear. Yes, it was like that feeling. But the learnings that I got was that even though there was fear in there and, and, and all these other emotions, I was being taken care of by a highest power because a little boy who was like two or three years old, not knowing what he was doing, was going to hurt me. And, and so my, one of my learnings, and I'll never forget, makes me want to cry, 
is that I am always protected. I am always looked after. I am safe. I am uh, like honored. I could go on a rant because that fear broke loose the unconscious, beautiful stuff that the universe is giving me. So yes. talk to us, like, what were the learnings that this little girl, because I'm thinking like, I want to beat somebody up that they threw a little girl in a, you know, in a room, but what, yes. what did you possibly yes. learn? Well, she, she learned that, that she was safe. She was safe yes. because she didn't live there, but she was always safe. Yes. She was loved. Yes. It was, you know, you were unconditionally loved. Yes. Okay. It wasn't your fault. Mm. Like those were, the, those were the sort of things that, that she learned. And, you know, the beautiful, bar, the beautiful part of our timeline is that, you know, our unconscious mind will take us not necessarily to something really dark or tragic. Yes, it, tell us about that. Okay, so the very first time you feel sadness, right? Let, let's just use that. Let's just say it's in this lifetime after birth. And, you know, we're, we're releasing sadness. Well, that sadness could be the fact that, you know, you were playing with your friend, you were a little toddler, you were playing with your friend and your friend took the toy off you. Yes. You felt sadness. That was the very first time. Because what we're doing is we're going back to the very first time you feel the negative emotion so that that first time unlocks every other time so then what we do is we go back along the timeline releasing sadness from every event that we felt that emotion on but what we do there is we then apply what we have learned from the first event to every other event yes and that just releases it you know, and like with, with our breakthrough work, um, and this is after Master Prac, what we do is we, we actually collect a history, like we collect a personal history of a client of every significant emotional event in their life that they consciously remember. So what they're doing is they're thinking and they are recalling all the things that have happened in their life that have brought them to this place right now. And once we release the emotion, we go back to the history yes. and we tick it off and we go, okay, are you still sad about this? Do you still feel sad about this? Because when we're collecting the history, we say to them, okay, when you think about that event now, what are you feeling? Anger, sadness, fear, hurt, or guilt? Because yes, we felt it back then, but sometimes we can have significant emotional events in our life that impact us so much that the emotional attachment is still there. It's like a thread. It's like a cord holding us back because we feel all of this emotion from our past and yeah. it, it keeps us stuck so it the beauty of stuck and it keeps us from from really unveiling that 95 percent of our power like that that truth of who we how are how magnificent we really are yes how magnificent we all are yes and the thing is i want to say that your past events, so significant past events, when not healed, limit us. So timeline helps us to become unlimited. Yes. So I like to frame it, limited and then unlimited. Because with, you, with that unlimited, real quick, the biggest testimony is I feel lighter. Yes. And when you feel lighter, anything is possible because now you don't have the weight of the stuff that happened 
And notice everybody, we're not talking about judging the events or calling them, well, that was bad. It's not about judgment. It's this um, non-judgmental space that we're like, I know that happened and that did happen. But what we're wanting is how can I liberate myself to be limitless? And so, yeah, so tell us about, um, because you, you stopped and you said in this lifetime, but have you had people go into past lifetimes or in the womb sharing yes. about that? Like, what, is, what does that feel like, sound like? Like, what do you do when they say they were an alien or something like that, or they were back there? I wouldn't say they were an alien, but I have had someone actually go so far back and and this and it's only happened one time mm -hmm. that they were actually one with the universe yes it was, it was like this young man he was it was his thinking was so expansive and um you know the beautiful part about it was he was on the autism spectrum as well and he, he came to work with me and he um just the way his mind worked was just absolutely beautiful. But I remember when he, I think it was when we were releasing anger, he, he just said, he goes, I just, I've, I've, I feel like I'm, I'm further, further back. Yeah. It, was, it was very strange, but I let him, I just let him go with it. And anyway, and he was just explaining all of these things that were going on from a worldly perspective. And yeah. the emotion that he felt. It was, yeah. it was it was the strangest thing. But but like you said, in the womb, you know, um, when a child is in utero, it can have all the emotions from the mother passed onto that child. So the example that I want to use here is a client that I had a few years ago who had chronic anxiety. And she was anxiety, she had anxious anxiety about everything. She was an anxious woman. Everything um it, there was she worried about everything, even the slightest little things. And I said to her, How long has the anxiety been present? She said, Carol, I can't remember not being anxious. I was mm -hmm. an anxious child, I was an anxious toddler. I was, yeah. you know, I was scared of, you know, little things. And, and I said, well, you know what, let's, let's explore that. So, you know, anxiety is a warning from the unconscious mind to focus on what you want. And mm -hmm. when we're not focusing on what we want, we are manifesting different things. So anxiety is created when we are, I guess, living too far in our future. Because then we start to overthink, like, well, what if this happens? And what if this happens? And what if this doesn't work? Mm -hmm. And we are getting so far ahead of ourselves. But what's important is that the unconscious mind is saying, hey, come back, come back, come yeah. back to the now moment, come back to, to being present in the yeah. now, come back to being present in your body. Yeah. Now, this beautiful woman had no idea where the anxiety came from so when we release the emotion of fear because anxiety is connected to fear mm -hmm. worry fearing about what's going to happen what's not going to happen fear can be connected from an event that happened in the past where you're constantly overthinking oh my god is this going to happen again in my future you know yeah. and that's not living so when we um when we did timeline for fear, this beautiful woman went back to the womb. Her unconscious mind took her to her mother being eight months pregnant, so not long before her birth. And she was looking down on an event and she saw her mother driving a car and there was a car crash. Mm. So the fear was her mother's Fear because you know yeah. I've been in a crash am I hurt is my baby okay you yeah. know what what if what if what if so yeah. the fear was her mother's which was then pulsing through her 
to her daughter. Yes. And the thing is, she did confirm with her mother that that, that actually did happen. Yes. And her mother never told her about that because, mm. you know, that's not something you want to say, oh, by the way, you know, I had this car crash when I was pregnant with you. But she was able to just, when she came out of timeline, she just, she, it was like the shoulders just, yeah. And I just said, I said, honey, it wasn't yours. It was not oh. your fear. Yeah. And she just looked at me and she burst into tears and she said, it was never mine. It was never mine. And I said, no, but now you can, you can go now and, you know, live this life knowing that you have nothing to worry about. Yes. Nothing. And she'd been holding on to that for like 30 plus years because it was before she was born. Yes. Which is why I talk so much about that generational. It is, it is either generational or through our parents or through ourselves or a past life. I talk about it because if science, not if science backs up that the way we handle our pregnancy, right? Music, yoga, like mindfulness, our, our child is hearing all this, is feeling all this, which is not a very biological MD thing, right? Like to say like feeling, but they really are feeling every emotion that we're feeling, which is why we must be healthy for ourselves first so that we can give from an overflowing cup rather than the remnants. And then the kids are going to have that emotional scar almost. So talk to us. So that was timeline. Like for me, timeline, we could talk for hours because um, you talk about it so much <laughs> because it's so miraculous. That's yeah. why I tag everything. Experience your miracle. You yeah. said about active imagination, and then you said anxiety is a warning from the unconscious mind to focus on what we really want in the now. What do in you want now? now. Yes. We so consumed with well, what does my husband really want? What do what does my kids really want? What do my job really want? What do what do all these outside things want, which causes anxiety? Because <laughs> you ain't gonna make everybody happy, dang it, you know. Be, but if I'm not happy, if I'm not willing to take that internal journey first, and through your programming, through your training, excuse me, you're able to help us all take our own journey, you yeah. know, go of the baggage. So through that journey, we've got the NLP that you are so adamant on making sure that we know the science and the magic behind it. I'm going to call it the magic. The it time is. therapy, yeah, exactly, yeah. The timeline therapy. But then we have hypnotherapy. There is actually a movie right now called Hypnotic that I want to go see with Casey. And it's talking about, hypnosis and how people use it for bad but check this out everybody and carol you probably have scientific language for this we have been hypnotized from the moment we hit this world either you must get a flask a hydro flask right in this form because i keep on bringing it up and drinking from it Hypnosis is looking at the golden arches and my kids getting excited, even though we never go there. But product the placement in movies. Say it again. Product placement in movies. Product placement in commercials. Product commercials. placement in everything. So hypnosis. Now tell us hypnotherapy though. This is not hypnosis. Okay, I'm going to make you be a lion. I'm going to make you go and do something bad because Joe Dispenza talks about this. He talks about we're not going to do what our values are ingrained in us, right? That, that's the one thing that I like to really hone in when we're talking about hypnosis and hypnotherapy because your unconscious mind, 
can absolutely reject what does not sit right with you, what is not within your moral compass yes. or your values. Mm. It's really, really important to, to know that, you know, you cannot accept something that is not good for you because it's the unconscious mind's job to, you know, protect you. But you have you have free will and choice here because yeah. a lot of people believe, you know, when I, when I have a client come in for hypnosis, especially for the very first time, I actually say to them, what is your perception on hypnosis? What do you believe it is? And, you know, I've had people go, oh, well, you're going to hypnotize me. You're going to do something to me, da, 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 da. And the thing is, it's not a do-to process. I'm not mm -hmm. going to do anything to you. It is a do-with process. Yes. Okay? We do this together in unison as a team. And this is, this is all the work that we do. Timeline therapy is a do with process as well. So, no, like in the, we, with the practitioner or the hypno, hypnotherapist, we are not going to do anything to you. We're not. We're not going to make you do something you don't want to do. I mean, you know, in my training room when we do face to face master practitioner. At the very end of that course, which is 15 days, the face-to-face -face one, and unfortunately I didn't get to do it with Casey's group because they were all online. But, you know, I did have people in the room roaring like lions and drinking from cups and they had no mouth, right? So we did that purely for a fun stage show event, right, at the end of the training just to, you know, lighten the mood because we'd had 15 days. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we take that hypnotic phenomena away so that we don't have people leaving the room thinking they're a lion or people leaving the room, you know, thinking that they can't eat because their mouth has been taken away. Yeah. So you know we can have fun with it, but the other the other side to this is that when we have a client coming for hypnotherapy, it's really important for us as the practitioner to know for what purpose are they there? Yes. What is it that they want to achieve? And you know, I always talk about well, if if it's a habit or a behavior that they want to get rid of. What are the consequences of continuing with this behavior? What are the consequences of, you know, changing the behavior? And what does that actually look like? Now, if we've got a client or someone who is coming for, let's, let's just say, quit smoking or, or you know, or, or a, a habit that, that is not serving them, it is really important that they are 150% ready to let it go. Yes. Not, not 100%, 150% ready. Thank you for saying that. Go. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's, a, that's a job in itself. That is the very, I've got two people that have come to me. They want to, they say, lose weight. One wants to lose weight and the other one wants to um, smoking cessation, right? Stop hey, smoking. That's really important, Jamile. Uh -huh. Release weight. And so that, that's why I want to share yeah. that. I Thank you. That. Yes. When I spoke with them, they're like, yes, I want to lose weight like you. And I said, okay, so let's talk. Let's, let's have a session and let's talk because first I want to hear them. What does lose weight mean? Like all, all this stuff, because let me tell you, I have done it before at 75%, 75% willing to self-hypnosis and get hypnosis to release weight because of the other trauma that was stuck in my body, in my mind, which is why timeline had to go first almost for me, for me. I had to identify 
And I really had to honor every single emotion. Because for me, I was very energetic and happy like you saying like, I'm angry, I'm angry. But I had to identify the anger, the sadness, the root of all of that first before I can move into 150%. I am committed to release weight, not lose it because I in the past had lost a lot of weight, but I found every damn- You can find it again. That's right. Yes. yes. Language so, is everything. Yeah. And so talking to them, that's one of the questions. It's like- how many times have you lost it? Oh, I've lost before, but I'm stuck now. I'm like, well, have you found it before? And so, so yes, language is everything. So when people come to me and say, yeah, I want to lose weight. I'm like, let's talk. Let's talk. What does that look like? What does that sound like? What does that feel like? And are you ready? And if you're not ready, you know, do what you need to do. And when you're ready, you'll know. And because of that readiness to be ready, it's been 40 pounds it's been super muscles, strength, stamina, um, so much that on, I don't know, a couple of days ago, I had to cover the head coach's rowing class and it's a full row. So Ooh. it's a full row. And I normally only do the interval row because it's boom, boom, boom. So I had, con I had told myself, I can't do full row. I don't have the stamina. I'm not strong enough. So then it came up and I was like, oh, shoot, I got to teach that class. I, that class was the best class for me to teach because I do have stamina. And I told the guy at the front, I said, how much more have I been holding on to not doing because of what I say and what I think? Yeah. So that's what this whole work is about, guys, is being able to identify, not judging like Jamile. You said the wrong thing. That was wrong. That was bad. But really, like, where is she coming from? What are her thoughts behind that? What are my thoughts? So share with us, because I know you've got to go to the gym. Speaking yeah. of the gym, um, but share with us, when is the next time that you're doing this training? Okay. And how long is it? Can Americans do it? You know, because I know it's a different time. Oh, I love the Americans. <laughs> We, we, love, we love you all so much. So um, our next event is on um, the June 19th. So it's a Monday for us. So that would be a Sunday um, for you to start. Yes. It, um, it is seven days. So the seven-day training. And within that seven days, you will be certified with four certifications. So you actually walk away with NLP practitioner, timeline therapy practitioner, NLP coach, and hypnosis practitioner. So we do a lot in those seven days. We yes. do three days of language and reframing and um, you know, listening and words and, you know, finding out what's underneath people's problems and how do we reframe and, um, you know, just unpacking, like really unpacking through language. So that's day one to day three. Day four is the, the best day. It's, it's change day. It's the start of the healing process. So what we've done in day three, what, one to three, we loosen the grip. And in this course, we use real problems. So you can come to us with real challenges. We, we don't make it up. We don't do role plays in this. We use real scenarios so that you can get healing from day one. Yes. So one to three, language. We're unpacking. We're loosening the grip on our problems. Day four five and six it's all around timeline we're saying goodbye to anger sadness fear hurt and guilt we are also looking at inner conflict as well so mm -hmm. remember Chile, we did timeline we did parts integration where yeah. you know, we are all conflicted okay we've got we've got conflict in our inner body and yeah. you know sometimes we can have a tug of war so we're conflicted 
So we look at, you know, bringing you back to wholeness Um, so are congruent in every single thing that you do. Because when we're conflicted, we're not congruent. So we look at parts integration, timeline therapy. We say goodbye to anger, sadness, fear, hurt, and guilt. This is where you get your own healing. We also say goodbye to all the limiting beliefs, all the BS that we believe that holds us back. And I really feel that once those emotions are gone and the limiting beliefs are gone, it's within those limiting beliefs. That's where the gold is because that is what really releases people from their past. Because, yeah. you know, when you've got someone saying you're this, you're that, I can't do this, I can't do that, we, we reframe that into, well, what is the new belief now? You know, and people walk out of there feeling like they're 10 feet tall because they... I as a kite, yes. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. also look at goal setting as well. So we put a future goal in your timeline. And, you know, the future goal goes right into your future. We put it in there for you to make sure that it happens. Yes. And then on day seven, we do hypnosis and we look at the body and mind connection using a pendulum and asking our body what our, you know, are there any, is there anything in our body that needs healing? Is there anything that needs realigning? How long is it going to take? And then we look at some beautiful little fun scripts and yeah it's it's an amazing seven days so this is always this is one of my script books and it's always right here always I mean it yeah. is uh I've got four other ones everything is right here they may you mail it out to us yes yes um, so we need um so we will like if anyone is interested um, you can also contact us through our website, which is mmnlp.com. Okay. Because we would love to talk to you. We would love to call you, have a chat on the phone first, so that we can get all your details because we need to talk to you first and then send out all of the, um, the study material. So what was it? M N. No M M. So Mary Mary, N L P. So M M. So mindset mastery N L P. M M N L P. dot com. Gotcha. Oh, look at Luke. Okay, Luke, with a nice little picture there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. I am posting this on here. I want to definitely let her go because she's going um, to work out. She's. She is not just a trainer. She is not just a healer, but for externally, she does this for herself. They, you guys just went to an event that you went into the, the cold. Yeah, Luke and I, um, we, we were with 200 other people wow. and we were doing ice baths on the beach. So what we did this, and this was with another one of our beautiful students, actually, um, you you may know you may know him. You were in the same group, like when we, where how we met you. But okay. anyway, we um we we drove. We got up really early before the sun came up. We drove an hour north. We went and sat on the beach with two hundred people. We did half an hour of breath work, and then we all stripped off down to our swimmers, and we all lined up in the freezing cold to jump into an ice bath for 90 seconds and then we got out and we ran straight into the ocean and it was like a spa bath it was so warm and so beautiful but this yeah we do this for our own healing I mean you know I'm 53 years old I have to look after myself so yeah guys if this is the time for you to experience your own adventure of life like the every moment of our life is succulent, even getting interrupted a couple times because my children needed me. Like, I want to cry. Like I get to do this now. My first go around with my children, 
I was so consumed with doing for everyone else minus myself. I was good at what I did too, but I was burning inside. So if you guys are ready to not just liberate your clients, your community, your generation, I'm telling you, Carol, it has been a line. It was like the past Jamila's generation and the future Jamila's generation is living now. So guys, if you're ready, click on the link, just ask questions. They are not pushers. What they are is beautiful beings. Um, I want to talk to you. Them. Say that again. I want to talk to you. You know, she even real wants to talk. Yeah, and the thing is, even if this course was too soon for anybody and you wanted to look at the next one, we can get that sorted too because we're running it again at the end, like toward the end of the year. But I mean, jump on it now because the sooner you do it, the sooner you have your own healing and then that ripple effect can just spread out to the world because that's what we, that's what we want. That's you know, what we're that's here for. Yeah. We're here to be in true alignment and to be congruent in everything we do. Everything we do. If we have any mess up with, uh, of of calling ourselves names or anything like that is because we're out of alignment with our highest, yeah. most beautiful self. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. There's been several people on at the same time listening to what is this? Because when I share with people what I do, I'm like, let me get the science behind it. The woman that trained me and that literally because of those four certificates, I have gotten two co paid contracts that they were yeah. so excited. They're like, send us your certificate so we can send you your check. And I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you guys. If you are looking for this, now is the time because whatever you're searching for was searching for you, honey boo boo. Have a beautiful day. I'll see you guys on the flip side.